This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with drummer Steve Riley of Riley's L.A. Guns. If I knew absolutely nothing about Riley's L.A. Guns, how would you describe the band's music to me? Uh, you know what? It's just a continuation on of L.A. Guns and the style that we've had from the 80s, and we stay true to that. And um, we are just proud of our old catalog and proud to still be writing and recording right now. It's in our blood, and uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're having a lot of fun, brother, doing this. And um, we uh, just finished another album. It's the second album from Riley's LA Guns, and uh, we just had a blast doing it. And uh, we are true to our form from what we've been doing in the 80s. And we're just continuing the on. And you're kind of teasing your way to the full album's release by releasing singles one at a time. And you're doing it in sort of a nod to the old school with vinyl releases. You're doing these three bundles, each with a copy of the full album plus uh, a single as you release them along the way. That's true. That's what we're doing. And we actually finished the album uh, uh, last year. We knew that we were just going to hold on to it for a little bit, let the label set it up, so a Golden Robot Records, so we could do some singles leading up to the full album. We released uh, Overdrive as a single in October. It was a no-brainer. It was a balls-out rocker, true to L.A. Gun style. And uh, we are excited for this second single, Rewind, that's going to come out this month. I can't wait for people to hear it. It's just a terrific, stellar song. And then we'll release one more single in April, and that's the title track from the album, Dark Horse. And then, you know, May, May 17th will be the release of the full album, Dark Horse. And uh, we'll lead into that by doing M3 and a couple of shows with Great White. And we're off and running with the full album out and us touring this summer. Awesome. Along with these uh, physical 7-inch singles, you also have uh, other tracks on it as well, right? Absolutely. They, they, they put together some nice bundles and packages for people that want to uh, collect stuff and order it and uh, some vinyl stuff. And uh, they're really nice, exciting little packages. Yeah, we, you know, we I can't wait for people to hear this full album. We've gone from renegades which was received really well by everybody a couple of years ago and we took it up a notch and with the performances the writing the production it's a, we took it up even another notch and and this new dark horse album has turned out stellar we're really excited about it now with the upcoming album were all four members involved in the songwriting or is it mainly kelly or did uh, everybody else get a hand in this one no, well, yeah, we're fortunate. The four guys in the band, me and Kelly, Scott Griffin, and Kurt Fuller, we're all songwriters, and we all write on our own, and we bring in the gist of a song, and then we'll finish it in pre-production, and we'll share credit on that song because we all put it together. Somebody will come in with the gist. Kelly came in with the gist of Overdrive, and then we finished it in the studio, and then this new single, Rewind, that's a Kurt Froelich song, the lead singer. He brought that in. And we we all have material that we're sitting on that we've already re written. And uh, everybody's a, a true writer in the band. So it's a real exciting way to go, too, because everybody gets to put their little mark on everything that we do. Was there an opportunity for the four of you to get together to record some of this material? I know with Renegades, everybody was locked down at the time, and it was more file sharing than it was in-person recording. Yeah, we were uh, uh, we were really fortunate with Renegades. We had written it and did it together in the studio right before the whole pandemic thing happened. So we had that album done before that whole situation set in. We were fortunate because a lot of bands didn't get that opportunity and then they tried to do it during that pandemic and it was very difficult and now you know this new album everything has calmed down 
with that situation. And uh, we were able to get the guys out to L.A. again and uh, record. We, you know, we made use of the Internet, too. We did a lot of pre-production by trading ideas and material over the uh, Internet with each other and, and giving each other some opportunity to put some input in on it. And then I had everybody come fly out to L.A. We did a, a short pre-production out there because we were all prepared for it. We knew what material we were going to do. And then, bam, right into the studio. And I'm producing these albums. I produced Renegades and I produced Dark Horse. So I'd have the guys fly out to L.A. we do the pre-production, do the recording. And then they would they all fly home and I would stay in with the engineer and we'd mix it and master it. So it, it's a nice little system we have set up. When the Dark Horse is finally released, how many songs can we expect on the album? There's 10 brand new songs on that album. It, 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 it stays true to what LA Guns has always been about. And we've, we've always had albums that bounce from one song to another. No two songs are really similar. And we've always uh, kind of stretched ourselves to touch on different styles and different uh, ways of writing. And uh, that's the that's similar to what we just did with Dark Horse. It's got it runs the gamut of different styles and different uh, feelings. And uh, this this album it just has so much great material on it. I'm I'm super excited for people to hear it. Now Riley's LA Guns has played uh, some live dates over the last year or so, as everybody was kind of returning to live performances and whatnot. Uh, there were some bumps along the way that I think everybody faced. Uh, you guys navigated your way through it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it was it was tough because people didn't really know uh, how long this was going to go on and what was going to happen, how we were going to get out of it, and back into it. I, I'm proud of everybody, other bands too, that I, are friends of mine from the 80s. We we just put our heads down and people did a lot of recording and uh, waited for that opportunity to open up again to get back out there. It's just super exciting that we're able to get out there again. The crowds are out there too. And, you know, I tell you what, all of those shows that not only we're doing, but other bands too from our genre, everybody draws so good out there too you know radio and mtv has dried up somewhat but obviously the live shows are still doing good and everybody's uh, having a great time out there still i have to agree with that sentiment that you guys from the 80s and even the some of the bands still around from the 70s are really killing it live i i i'm scared of what the future holds you know 30 years down the road well you know what i, I a lot of talk has been is rock dead and it couldn't be further from the truth because rock will, will never go away and in in the 60s 70s and 80s rock in the 90s too this great stuff that came out of seattle too it, that, that stuff will live on great material lives on it has a fan base that will not go away and generations because our our people that are at our vet shows it the age ranges from young to old, and uh, it's not just we have an old uh, fan base that grew up with us. They, their kids and and other young youngsters, they're digging on it too, and uh, they they tell us constantly that they're so happy that we're still doing it. And so I, I I never believe that adage that rock is dead. Rock will be around for a long, long time. Uh, you you mentioned that you guys are going to be playing M3 this year. Didn't you play it last year as well? Uh, we didn't because, you know, they like bands to take a year off and they can change the, uh, the, 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 the lineup somewhat to make it fresh every year. So we did it the year before last, but we didn't do it last year. But we are excited to go back this year. We're doing it May 7th. And so that'll start our whole live process off. We'll do May 5th with Gray White in Detroit. And then it's like a warm-up show, and then we're going to go down. And two days later, on May 7th, we'll be doing M3. The album comes out. The full album will come out May 17th. And then we're off and running. We're, we're hoping to do a bunch of casinos, fairs, festivals, and sheds, and uh, some really nice shows. 
Any chance of getting overseas? I mean, the festival uh, scene in the U.S. is minimal compared to what's available on the other side of the pond. Yeah, yeah. We've always got our hat in the ring for uh, anything that we could do in Europe, Scandinavia, in Asia, in South America, Mexico. So we're always telling them. And, you know, our label, Golden Robot, is based out of Australia. So we'll most likely be going over and doing some Australian shows, too. And we're hoping to, to, to pair up with another couple of bands that we can either open up for or, or support and, uh, and, and have some full houses. But, yeah, we're always a game for doing anything overseas, too. A uh, big tour that just happened this year was the 40th anniversary of Wasp, and they toured the U.S. for the first time in over a decade. And obviously you were there towards the beginning of Wasp career. Did you have a chance to go out and catch one of the shows? I didn't, but I was excited that Blackie took it back out. And, uh, I, you know, I was real fortunate. I was on, I was involved with the first four albums with Wasp when they, they had so much heat on them and, uh, we had such a blast with that original Wasp when we went out and with me and Randy Piper and Chris Holmes and Blackie. It was a great band. And uh, I was uh, super excited when I was in that band and played on Wild Child and Blind in Texas and all of that stuff. So, you know, it was a great period of my career. And uh, I was just fortunate to go right from Wasp into L.A. Guns. But as far as Wasp being out there, I am super excited for anybody from the genre that gets back out there and, and is playing because there's a lot of fans that want to hear that stuff live. It's so crazy to think that back in the 80s, some of the things that Wasp was doing on stage was like really shocking and it scared, uh, you know, the squares. Yeah. <laughs> but today yeah, it seems really rather hard. tame. Yeah. You know, back then we were really breaking down some doors too. And, uh, and uh, the show that we put together it was well documented on Live at the Lyceum. People can see what it was all about with the chick on the rack and Blackie with the blood and the whole thing and the throwing the raw meat out to, at the audience. It, it, it was a lot of fun, man. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy that it was documented on Live at the Lyceum because that was the full show that we had taken around the world. And some people didn't get to see it, but... At least it's on video and you could check it out, you know. A uh, couple of years back, you did some acting in a television show. Have you had any more gigs? No, you know what I did? Um, they, a friend of mine had written this horror movie and uh, he had asked me, do I want to um, see if I could place a couple of songs? And I did. I sent him a couple of songs that he ended up using in it. But before they ended up shooting it, he asked me, would I want to read for a part? And, you know, I, I had not really done any acting, but I, I was always super uh, into it. And if the opportunity came, I would love to try it. And uh, I went and read for the part and they wanted me to do it. And so they flew me down to New Orleans and uh, I shot a part for the movie. And uh, it, it, it was just exciting try is checking out that whole other form of art. And, uh, seeing how they approached it because i've been involved with music for my whole life and uh, that whole movie making thing i have so much respect for them because it's a very very difficult form and it's a very trying form you know it's a lot of sitting around and waiting and uh you have to hit your mark and everything so i got a lot of respect for those people that do acting it's not an easy thing now, when it comes to Riley's L.A. Guns releasing material, do you have to kind of coordinate it around what's going on with the other L.A. Guns that Tracy is in? No, not really, because we, we're we doing our own thing. Those guys, I believe, are doing what I had done, which is 250 shows a year, filling all the weekdays up with small clubs all over the country and trying to connect the dots so they're out there for long periods of time. I had done that for so long, and it's a grueling experience. It's not an easy schedule. And uh, I, uh, Kelly and I, we don't want to do that anymore. We want to do nice venues and, like I said, uh, a lot of casinos 
and a lot of fears and festivals. And uh, if you do those type of shows, you know you're playing on a nice stage, you're playing with good equipment, a nice PA, and uh, you can hang a backdrop and nice hotels. So if we could do 20 to 40 shows a year, we're happy, but not to compete and do 250 shows a year. So we have absolutely two different ways of approaching this. And, uh, you know, we don't really step on each other's feet. And we, and one thing me and Kelly haven't done is badmouth those guys. We, we still love those guys. And we've done so much great stuff with them that, you know, we, we're just not going to ever go get down to that and, and get into a war of words with those guys. It, it is what it is, and we're doing what we're doing. And we wish them luck with what they're doing, too, bro. We really do. Do you work with any other bands, or does L.A. Guns pretty much consume your time? I know when the lockdowns, everybody was kind of dipping their toes into other projects and whatnot. Yeah, you know what? I Because of what I do with L.A. Guns, and I've done it from the very beginning when I joined right out of Wasp into L.A. Guns, I, I had the most experience, so I was kind of put in the position by the band themselves to take over and 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 be the liaison through the record label and the management. So you know, I I do a lot of planning for the band. I produce the records, and it takes up a lot of my time. So when I'm not doing LA Guns, I like to really just relax and and pull off of the scene and. Uh, I'd love to work with other people, and if the opportunity came up, I would love to experience, uh, to check it out. But it really does take up a lot of my time on just running the band. And like I said, I've done it for 35 years. I've, I've been this person that is sort of the guy that makes things happen, and that's okay. But, you know, when I'm not doing LA Guns, I'm pretty much sitting back watching my teams from Boston play sports. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not they're not fun to watch right now. I know. Well, you know what? The Bruins and the Celtics, they're doing really good. The Patriots, uh, that, that, the glory years are kind of over. And the Red Sox are trying to get their feet going again. But uh, I'm thinking that the Bruins and Celtics are doing really well right now. Yeah, they've been pretty consistent lately. But, you know, it's, it's, it, it's tough in hockey. So many teams. Oh, my God, it's really tough. They've been one of the better teams for this first half of the year, and they're on pace to actually break a, a record for most points in the season. But it's a different story when the playoffs start. Let's see what happens when those come around. <laughs> those are all the questions I have for you today, Steve. The new album, The Dark Horse, comes out May 17th, and fans can enjoy the singles Overdrive, and next week they can enjoy Rewind. I'm really excited for them to hear Rewind. I know they've heard Overdrive. Like I said, it was a no-brainer coming out of the gate with that. It's a balls-out rock, a true to LA Gun style. Rewind is just a stellar song. I can't wait for them to hear it. It's a Kurt Froelich song. The lead singer brought it in, and we finished it in the studio. But the entire album, there's not a wasted track on it at all. And uh, it's just filled with great, great material. I can't wait for people to hear it, Paul. I'm real excited to see what they think. I'm actually looking forward to it myself because Renegades was definitely one of my top 10 albums of the year when that came out. You guys really impressed me on that one, and I can't wait to see what you have next. Uh, brother, we really appreciate your support, man. We don't take it for granted. Like I said, May is a kickoff for everything, the full album. Rewind will come out in a couple of weeks, but May will be like live performances and the full album coming out, and we're just super excited for it. All right, man. Uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, come on the podcast, and I wish you the best of luck with everything. Thank you so much, brother. You be safe. I hope to see you out there live this year, okay? Oh, definitely when you reach the East Coast. <laughs>